Hello and welcome to Omega Ordained. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between robots, androids, and cyborgs. Oh my. Let's start with robots according to Merriam-Webster, a machine that resembles a living creature in being capable of moving independently, as by walking or rolling on wheels, and performing complex actions such as grasping and moving objects. This definition is pretty broad, but accurate. In the sci-fi universe, there are tons of examples of robots. R2-D2, my favorite robot of all time, is much like a mobile manufacturing factory. R2 can weld, cut, access computer terminals, and was capable of flight. Astromech droids like R2 were designed to repair starships mid-flight, when repair facilities were out of range. The Star Wars universe is probably the best example of what future robots and androids of the future would look like. There was a lot of thought put into this. Depending on the function, the robot shape would follow. Consider the battle droid. I would consider this a robot and not an android. Battle droids are designed to be folded up to one third their full size, so that a carrier ship can carry many more troops than if they did not have this ability. This does come at a cost, as they were extremely weak against enemy fire. But they do make up for this with their sheer numbers. Another prime example is the medical droid. They have all the tools and other devices built in. They have one duty, to repair damage to organics. Robots in the Star Trek universe are rare. From the original Star Trek, we have the M4. M4 was a designation for a robot constructed by Flint. It served as his butler, housekeeper, gardener, and guardian. The robot hovered in the air and could fire a type of heat beam. It was destroyed in 2269 and immediately replaced by a second unit. Star Trek The Next Generation had few robots. My favorite was the Exocomp. Maybe because it reminded me of R2-D2, both the Astromech and the Exocomp were repair robots. The Exocomp was capable of flight and had a built-in micro-replicator to manufacture the tools needed to complete any repairs needed. And that's it for robots for Star Trek, just the two. Now let's move on to Stargate SG-1, SGA, and SGU. This franchise has more robots than Star Trek, but far less than Star Wars. The number one robot is also one of the main villains from the show, the Replicators. Much like their name implies, they have one job, replicate. Everything they do is ultimately for the same goal, attacking ships to board them, and replicate more units. Take over the ship and use that ship to attack another and start the cycle over. Their growth is exponential. One replicator left alone on a ship can become hundreds in a few hours. In Stargate Universe, they discovered an ancient maintenance robot much like the Exocomp or an Astromech. Its duties are to repair the ship. It was also quite a bit bigger. Another robot from the Stargate franchise is the MALP. Although it's not autonomous, it is considered a robot, at least a remote controlled one. The MALP has an articulated arm, as well as numerous sensors and cameras. I was always impressed with this specifically designed piece of technology. You don't know what's on the other side of the gate without going through it. The creation of the MALP has saved hundreds of Stargate personnel. There are numerous robots we could discuss here, and let's do so in the comments. But for now, let's move on to the android. Merriam-Webster's definition of an android is rather vague. A mobile robot usually with a human form. Androids are much more than a robot the prime example being Lieutenant Commander Data, with a close second being C-3PO. There are many other examples, but let's start with these two. Data was made to be as close to human as possible, and at the same time, being ten times stronger, as well as an intelligence that goes far beyond a normal human. However, being emotionless, he is far closer to a Vulcan than a human and lacks many common sense things that most people know. C-3PO has the capability of calculations in probability and can speak many languages. His often used introduction 
C-3PO, human-cyborg relations is a bit of a misnomer, as cyborgs are something else entirely. However, C-3PO does have emotions and a sense of self-preservation. Both Lieutenant Commander Data and C-3PO gave their lives in the line of duty to save their friends and comrades. Other androids of note include the duplicates Harlan made of SG-1. Although they did not know that they were androids at first, they did come to accept it and made a difference in the universe. Also, like Data and C-3PO, they gave their lives protecting their human counterparts. I believe the true definition of the android would be something like a robotic creature with an AI that mimics that of a human mind with the possibility of becoming self-aware. This might be more appropriate. Now, the cyborg. According to Merriam-Webster, the cyborg is a bionic human. This is the only explanation. I believe this is another one that's kind of vague. Is a person with an artificial leg a cyborg? I think not. I think you must have some kind of machine in the brain to qualify a person as a cyborg. If, however, you did consider an artificial limb as qualifying a person as a cyborg, then both Picard, with his artificial heart, and Luke Skywalker, with his replacement hand, would be considered cyborgs. I do not believe that is the case. However, Darth Vader has massive reconstructions throughout much of his body, but I believe his brain was intact. I would say he is close to being a cyborg, but not one. Now. General Grievous is most definitely a cyborg. He was about 5% human, or whatever alien he was supposed to be. He also had many limbs. Some kind of brain implant would have to be necessary for him to function. From Star Trek, the most famous cyborgs are the Borg. The Borg have massive brain and body implants, or even the removal of limbs and different equipment or weapons installed. The Borg are a prime example of what happens if an entire race merges so completely with machines. The individual no longer matters, only the needs of the many. Their goal is to capture and convert every alien race that they deem as qualified into more of themselves. All thinking as one. I could spend a day on the Borg, but let's move on. Robocop is a cyborg. He was a police officer who was brutally murdered and rebuilt as a perfect police officer. One who knows all law, who has greater strength and accuracy than any normal human, and no memory of his prior life, making Robocop completely controllable. However, this didn't last long, as eventually Murphy, Robocop's actual name, began to remember his past and sought revenge upon those who killed him. If there's anyone out there who hasn't seen the original Robocop, you are in for a treat. I highly recommend it. It is bloody. But if you're into that, you won't be disappointed. Regardless, it is an awesome story and top-notch acting. Terminators are like cyborgs, but in reverse. They are machines covered with human skin and organs to better infiltrate human society so they can better achieve their own goal to end all human life on the planet. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.